Now we have the Senate's version. What would it mean for Arkansas? The reversal on Cuba. No one thinks it's good for Arkansas. Two global giants, one based in Arkansas, joined in battle and shopping and a product that neither offers, at least not now. Arkansas Week, next. Local broadcast of Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest major newspaper, bringing you local, national, and international news since 1819. By the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Arkansas Week. Congressional Republicans, some of them, at odds with State House Republicans, some of them, and the implications for budgets, federal and state. That's where we begin tonight. Hoyt Purvis joins us, an independent journalist and columnist for the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Wesley Brown, reporter, editor for Talk Business and Politics. Bobby Ampison, editor, reporter, Arkansas Public Media. Thanks to everybody for coming in. Well, we had the House version of the uh, the Trump. I don't even know whether we can call it a Trump bill. He hasn't decided yet. I don't think we had a House version of health care reform of the reform. Hoyt. Now we have the Senate version. Mm -hmm. Well, at least we have the Senate leadership version and uh, the majority of Republicans who are the majority in the Senate. Uh, support uh, the proposed uh, draft, the draft as it's being referred to. Uh, but uh, there, there are many questions yet to be answered, and certainly there's a lack of unanimity among the Republicans at this point. And then there are, of course, all sorts of implications for states, including uh, particularly in Arkansas, because uh, at the center of all this is the question about the future of Medicaid and how that's going to be applied. And clearly, uh, there, there are some differences of opinion on that. But to put it in its simplest terms, uh, the proposal, the draft, would give more flexibility or allow more flexibility or allow flexibility to the states, but uh, less funding uh, would be uh, available. So uh, again, uh, we've, we've cleared uh, the, the one hurdle of that is of getting the bill uh, to, the, to the Senate, but uh, the, the hope uh, of uh, having it uh, approved in the Senate, the, which uh, Leader McConnell has uh, been saying that uh, the vote's going to come uh, by this time next week. I do, I do just want to add one more <laughs> comment here because I think it's relevant, and that is um, w when we think of f medical care, which is what we're talking about here, and physicians, uh, traditionally, historically, uh, physicians take the Hippocratic Oath, which <laughs> pledges, which pledges them to uh, maintain high ethical standards and uh, to do no harm. Well, I would suggest that in what we've what we've seen in this case is the Hippocratic Oath, uh, <laughs> as applied, particularly with the secrecy, which. It really, uh, to me, I mean, just from a standpoint of of, uh, of what's right, as well as um, what what is is feasible, th there's no real reason for secrecy uh, in this. And uh, of course, Senator, really? Senator, well, <laughs> well, I mean, no overt reason. <laughs> I wouldn't go any further than that because, uh, and I, I could elaborate much more on this, but. The, the fundamental point here is that um, here we are in some ways where we were seven years ago. Some of the shoes are on the other feet, you might say, and certainly there is some hypocrisy uh, uh, that could be pointed to on both sides. Fundamentally, it has become a, a, such a partisan issue in every respect that that just sort of overwhelms every every other aspect of the, of the legislation. Back to that in a moment. First, <laughs> the, the money. Uh, abroad, 
uh, Mr. Hutchinson on a trade mission, Governor Hutchinson on a trade mission, mm -hmm. issued a statement. I've started reviewing the Senate bill, but a great deal more time and thought is required before we understand the changes completely. Uh, I look forward to discussing the proposal with Senators Bozeman and, Co Bozeman and Cotton. There are significant positive changes in the Senate bill, inc including increased flexibility for the states, but I will need more analysis on potential cost impacts on Arkansas. I would submit, no, he doesn't. <laughs> he knows it now, and he's horrified. Yeah, uh, he. Well, I was at uh, went to the state capitol, to, and governor was overseas, and he had a Skype with reporters, and that question, that very question was asked, and he was concerned because, like us, like the reporters, we hadn't and uh, received much information on, on this 142-page bill. I mean, the draft came out yesterday. Still, you know, you still have to go through and see. Uh, of course, everybody's concerned about the Medicaid cuts. But the governor uh, said he had to talk with Senator Cotton a week bef uh, before he left for uh, uh, his European trip. But he, he still is concerned about the cost shifts, possible cost shifts to the states and, and the, with, along with the Medicaid cuts. So there is a great deal of concern uh, from uh, uh, Governor Hutchinson's office and the fact that our senators haven't to really come out and said where they are on this. And there's also, uh, you mentioned the state capital, there's other lawmakers who haven't come out and said it on the record, but they're concerned also that the legacy that they've built in the, in the, the Republican legacy that they've built in Arkansas for this model, and they call it a model, of, of uh, uh, based on Ob Obamacare, they're they're thinking that this uh, whole thing will be up for up for, for nothing. So, you know, by all accounts, this this Senate bill was crafted by the majority leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. from Kentucky. Kentucky was a state that pretty much rejected okay. Obamacare. They didn't expand Medicaid. For them, th th this is not a um, a catastrophe. No. Arkansas nearby. We did expand Medicaid. We mm -hmm. we did have at first the private option, and, and then Arkansas that works. works. Mm -hmm. We kind of invested a lot of our Kansans into this expansion of health care. Mm -hmm. So for Arkansas and for Governor Hutch Hutchinson, it's a it's a big deal if Medicaid is capped, if the the funding um, is reduced, if tax incentives are are cut out of this. So it financially. Arkansas is just simply more on the hook than a state like Kentucky is. Yeah, and I think, you know, for, for uh, Governor Hutchinson, it's part of his legacy. It's part of, uh, I mean, he came into, uh, uh, the, uh, in a, into the governor's uh, office, and this was <laughs> the first thing on his plate that he had to deal with, and he's done, uh, I and mean, you have to give him credit, he's done a great job in navigating both sides uh, uh, and making sure that, the, that our Kansans are taken care of. But, well, he's also given some uh, some red meat to his Republican friends by instituting certain rules for, for people who, who receive uh, uh, Medicaid and, and health care services. So uh, uh, it's it's interesting you've got this dichotomy, as you mentioned, between the, the Arkansas senators and the governor and the state capitol. Uh, Senate yeah. bill, as, as I think the House bill, I'm, my comparisons may be a bit off here, mm -hmm. but certainly the Senate version not only would um, scale back the Medi existing Medicaid, but it would cap mm -hmm. the federal expense, federal share, putting an enormous financial burden on Arkansas and so, well, every state that, that did expand mm -hmm. Medicaid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the same time, you know, the administ Hutchinson administration has authored about, well, into the nine figures mm -hmm. in general revenue cuts. It's really talking about a bond, yeah, potentially. There's, there are many ironies here, uh, but one of, the, one of the most obvious is that we have a Republican governor who is now being squeezed by Republican uh, legislation or proposed legislation in the Senate. And the other sort of larger irony, if you apply it nationally, I think, uh, if you, certainly if you believe polls, uh, while I don't think anybody at this point would stand up and try to make the case that the ACA or Obamacare is perfect or great or anything near that. Uh, I think it's widely recognized that there are many, many flaws and many problems with it. But uh, the irony is that uh, overall it's become relatively popular. That is to say people uh, have, have adjusted to it, mm -hmm. many people dependent on it, and, uh, they, and now 
although for a long time it was sort of even to, to say Obamacare was was almost a, a, a bad, a bad word, word. <laughs> uh, but we, we, we seem to have passed that uh, uh, passed that point and and now we have again the the, the Republican leadership in the Senate saying they're going to have, have this thing to a vote uh, within a week. Mm -hmm. Adding a tincture of spice to this whole thing, certainly from an Arkansas perspective, is that uh, the, one of the two senators from Arkansas, Mr. Cotton, mm -hmm. was among the, what do you want to call them, Gang of 13, Committee of 13, mm -hmm. that Mr. McConnell assembled to draft this bill. Mm -hmm. And at mid-morning on Friday, we, haven't heard we don't know what he thinks about it. Well, yeah, he's uh, uh, obviously, uh, even Governor Hutchinson mentioned the fact that he was one of the chief ar architects of this legislation. Uh, you, you know, maybe we'll have a, a vote in a week. Maybe maybe, maybe we won't. Uh, I guess the one thing that people are, are asking about, where is the analysis? What is the cost? Uh, what, what, uh, and I think once those uh, 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 CBO numbers come out, it's going to be huge, it's, and it's going to be a major shock to uh, uh, to the system of both in, in Washington and, and back home on Main Street. Yeah, that's a, you, uh, Wes is very uh, right in bringing up the point of the, of the CBO, the scoring, what, what this is going to cost, what the impact is going to be, uh, and uh, clearly that could have some uh, impact on, on what, the, what actually happens in the Senate. Mm, yeah. Tom, the, oh, go ahead. I checked Tom Cotton's uh, uh, Twitter uh, page this morning, and there's <laughs> one mention of something that could tangentially be called, uh, uh, you know, healthcare, and it was meeting with the Optometrist Association. <laughs> no comment, by the way, about the Senate bill, just that he was meeting with them. I don't think Senator Cotton ha has been. Um, very active, certainly uh, in terms of uh, what he said publicly. Mm. He, he's not um, given a whole lot of opinion on this. There's another senator from Colorado who's also in, in the group who's claimed that he, he didn't even see all, all of right. the parts of the bill be mm -hmm. before it was released on Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. I think this bill was largely crafted by uh, mm -hmm. the majority leader's um, staffers yeah, and, right. and, and members, you know, kind of hand-picked members. This is Mitch McConnell's bill, mm. and even the so-called Gang of 13 are not uh, integral like the, you know, the Gang of 8 of, of yore. Mm. Point draw, if you would, on your long Washington, uh, Washington years. How unusual was the crafting of this bill? I, I want to remember that in terms of, well, the legendary chairman of Ways and Means, Mr. Mills, was famous for sending to the House floor, anyway, tax bills with a closed rule. And I've been in that chamber and so are you, <laughs> that little ante room off the, uh, the House floor in Washington. It's seated about maybe 20 people and they would cook tax legislation in there straight to the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was usually done within a, an existing or standing committee uh, as opposed to this sort of ad hoc group. Now, I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting that uh, this is unique or distinctive in the history of, of the Senate. But it is unusual that uh, to operate in this in this fashion. Uh, but uh, at the same time, if you look at the record, Senator McConnell has had a lot of success in either blocking things that he was opposed to, mm -hmm. or in getting things through where there appeared to be uh, a difficult uh, road for him to to uh, move on. So uh, possibly, uh, you know, we could find some some uh, antecedents uh, historically that that uh, something like this has, ha has happened before. But uh, I think it it's, uh, represents a conviction on the part of the Republican leadership that this is the way they've got to do it. And to leave open a minimal possibility for amendment, I mean, they say it, anybody can offer an amendment. Well, yeah, but, you know, is the leadership really going to encourage that? <laughs> uh, obviously not. Hmm. So. Uh, the next week is going to be a fascinating one to watch just in terms of, of what maneuvering goes on and, and what some of these holdout senators are able to negotiate for themselves because uh, more than likely uh, they're, they're going to pass a bill uh, and it could even happen within the week. Now, even if that happens, they've still got to reconcile with the House and clear other hurdles, not the least being the, the CBO. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, are able to deal with and that. And once again, certainly not for the for the first time in the last half dozen years or eight, for that matter, 
This is a intra-party battle, the battle on the mm -hmm. GOP side. They know where the Democrats are. There's no Democratic support for yeah, this right. for this bill. But you've got two factions in Washington, as you had in Little Rock, mm -hmm. with the uh, Arkansas well first private option, and then Arkansas Works. A lot of job owning went on trading. Yeah, and and the, and the one thing and you mentioned this inter-party fighting. The the one thing that that people haven't talked about is the fact that Trump has been. Off, he, he hasn't really been involved in the negotiation. Hadn't come out, but I guarantee you, is if as Hort predicts that that there's a bill passed and it gets to the president's desk and he puts his signature on, it's going to become Trump care, <laughs> just <laughs> as as the last president carried uh, that tag Obama Obamacare for eight years. Uh, whatever they pass, as you said, there, there's no Democrat support for it. There, it wasn't in the House, and and there won't be uh, uh, in the negotiations if it gets passed. So. Uh, it's going to be, they're going to have to own it, it whether good or bad, they're going to have to own both, all, all parts of it. Okay, got to move on. Cuba, one week ago today, we had a fair idea of what <laughs> the uh, Trump administration was going to propose, Wesley, in terms of uh, the Obama administration's mm -hmm. reversal mm -hmm. of 60 years, really, of American foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis that little mm -hmm. island country down there. Mm -hmm. uh, one week later, we've got a better idea. Mm -hmm. Take it away. Yeah, by, by, uh, in the same way that, that uh, President Obama loosened uh, the Cuban policies, uh, uh, President Trump has come back in the same way and it issued executive orders to tighten up uh, uh, the Cuban policy basically on, on uh, capital ex expenditures, uh, rice, agricultural products, and also travel. Those are the two major areas. And, and the impact uh, is, is going to be uh, tremendous, and, and you still have that, that same dichotomy. Our governor saying, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I support, uh, uh, he's not uh, saying get rid of the embargo, but let's begin to move in a way that we can have norm, normalize the policies with Rick Cuba where we can have trade. And uh, of course, you got sitting in Springdale, Arkansas, you got Tyson Foods, and down here in South Arkansas, you have rice farmers who are who were excited about this, uh, uh, even our, our uh, uh, Representative uh, Crawford, uh, who has been almost the same policy as President Obama, yeah. supporting yeah, and Mr. It. Bozeman. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and saying that, that we should would, uh, 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 have a more liberal policy in, in encouraging trade with, with, with Cuba, who has been isolated for so, so many years. But, and also, again, you have a quiet, Senator Cotton, who has has not said much about this policy, who who has well, he opposes. Yeah, he opposes, right. but, well, but it, yeah, it, it, but that's based on the the sort of uh, the, the uh, political situation in in Cuba, the the longstanding uh, embargo, et cetera. He he hasn't really, uh, I don't think, jumped into the whole question about exports, which mm -hmm. is of, of really what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, I mean, it's important to say that. Congressman uh, Crawford and Senator Bozeman have both been mm. very strong on this issue. Mm. Uh, and again, there, there are all sorts of ironies because here we have a Republican president, but uh, making, uh, taking a, a position that is contrary to what our governor and, and some of the members of the congressional delegation and something that's very important to the state of Arkansas. Governor Hutchinson uh, never fails in discussing this issue to make the point that uh, when he had a chance uh, not too long ago to talk to mm. the president that he emphasized how important uh, agricultural exports were to the state of Arkansas. Well, <laughs> you know, in this case, you could say politics uh, prevailed over, over uh, policy in terms of uh, this was a, a move, the, the rollback of the opening, the Obama op opening was uh, the uh, something that was counter to the political sentiment uh, that uh, provided a base of support for uh, Mr. Trump in Florida. So here we have a, a, something that I think is clearly where, where politics has prevailed, even though in the rest of the country uh, there's general support for moving forward in relations with, with Cuba. I think, I think Arkansans should know and be really proud of the fact that mm -hmm. Arkansas produces more than 50% of the country's rice. total rice. Yeah. Um, this issue with Cuba is kind of like an Arkansas, Cuba, 
Cuban community in Miami and Florida type. That's the triangle. Yeah. Our farmers want to bring that rice over to Cuba. The, the average Cuban eats uh, about 170 to 200 pounds of rice a year. Um, it's a $300 million market potentially. And, uh, and, and trade with them for a decade was uh, verboten. Meanwhile, Brazil and uh, Vietnam, Vietnam are, yeah. are China. China. There's, another, there's another irony. Yeah. Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> and, and they're not, obviously, they're far away. It would be much easier for us to ship just, the just, rice down just, to the Gulf yeah. and, and over by. You can uh, almost shoot it over there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> More Arkansas <laughs> commerce, and this one is the uh, behemoth out of Bentonville versus. Mm. Where's Amazon based out? It, California? I don't yeah, know. I mean, another being with online. I mean, Amazon yeah, I uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, reached uh, uh, a real key uh, benchmark in, in the stock market of $1,000 a share. Uh, really, in, in terms of market value, uh, it, it eclipses uh, Walmart now, but it's it, it, it purchased Whole Foods market. Uh, I think this deal was for about Fourteen billion, but the fourteen the, the, billion. Yeah, Say but, that. <laughs> yeah, but I guess the interesting thing about it, 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 it forecasts is that Walmart and Amazon will be in this futuristic kind of a battle for for getting groceries and other online goods to you, or just just regular goods, uh, uh, goods to you. And and at this very point, Amazon knows how to do it. They know how to. Uh, I mean, I, if I could get. Grocery shipped to to my house, I would be I would be a happy person, and, and I think that's what this forecast is that Amazon and, and Walmart would be in this battle for for that dollar uh, from the the uh, the basic uh, person consumer. I mean, and it's it's it, I think these are the two giants uh, that are going to be in that battle, and it's going to be really interesting going into the future because it's it's going to it's going to take place in brick and mortar and online. So it's it's, it's huge. And each one of them is making moves, strategic moves, to get into the other one's market. Mm -hmm. So Amazon wants to pick up Whole Foods. Walmart, meanwhile, has picked up kind of quietly. I mean, it made news, but Jet.com, Jet Jet mm -hmm. ModCloth, Bonobos, these are uh, attire manufacturers or, or retailers, rather. Mm -hmm. um, so each one of them is trying to combine this kind of food and clothing mm -hmm. um, model, which ironically, Walmart in the 90s <laughs> had cornered, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was a retailer of food, housewares, and and food. Yeah, and, um, and, yeah, and the big thing is, is 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 we look at it. Walmart didn't like a lot of uh, brick and mortar retailers didn't, and you're starting to see that uh, Sears is probably going to go out of business. J C Penney's is closed, and Macy's is closed, and dozens of stores. They didn't look uh, far enough into the future and see this. Uh, where consumers can, can sit in their home on a computer and basically order everything that they want. And I think the last big market for that is food, grocery uh, store products. No one has really figured out how to get fresh groceries, meat, uh, produce, and, uh, and all. Uh, you can do canned goods and that stuff. But, yeah, uh, but into the home and where, where and, and there are some smaller retailers out there that have started to do that. but. But that's the, that's the final frontier. There is a piece of vegetable matter which neither delivers, <laughs> at, at least for the time being, Bobby. But guys, we have, a, we have a little better idea now, maybe, of who's going to sell marijuana in Arkansas. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, this, uh, this past week, uh, two, two things happened. The, the applications for uh, the, the cultivation facility, that's where they're going to grow, basically. That's what you're, you're growing pot. That's what, it, for medical uh, purposes. Uh, the application. Farm Bureau is going to accept them <laughs> as members. I don't. <laughs> applications will start coming in on June 30th, and we'll start seeing these companies who who is interested. It's some interesting speculation out there of the players that are going to get in this market. And then you have the, also on June 30th, the applications for patient IDs. These are people. Consumers, uh, 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 doctors, patients who, who will need a physician's okay uh, to uh, to go out and get an ID card where they can go out and and go to these uh, to, through their doctor get a prescription and then go to these uh, pot facilities and and pick up their cannabis uh, uh, in different in whatever form that they're going to have it in when they get to the retail level. No. <laughs>
But but this is, I mean, folks should know that th that the application process starts on, on June 30th, mm -hmm. but it doesn't close well, until September 18th, and only then does the uh, Medical Marijuana Commission mm -hmm. begin reviewing the applications. Mm -hmm. They could be in the hundreds. Yeah, We're, mm -hmm. we're not expecting um, any kind of uh, announcement of, of who's being selected until way toward the end of the eight, end of the year at, at earliest. Yes, and there's only, actually for the cultivation facility, there's only five dispensaries are going to be, I think, 32. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see who, who as, as, as Bobby mentioned, who, who are, who's going to be involved in this. You know, it's going to be a boom, it may be a booming market. Well, we'll continue to watch and try to cut through the smoke as we get. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to everybody for coming in. As always, thanks to you for watching. See you next week. Local broadcast of Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest major newspaper, bringing you local, national, and international news since 1819. By the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday.